So we're here right before CES is about to kick off. It kicks off tomorrow. And if you looked around, you probably wouldn't believe that this is all gonna be perfectly set up, well manicured, and it's gonna be one heck of a show, especially if it's anything like last year. I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff that we've seen already and some of the stuff we're gonna see tomorrow. But I'm here with Kyle Connor and Alyssa. How's it going, guys? Hey. And we're just kind of getting a feel for how things are setting up right now for the show. But while I've got the man with me, I was going to talk a little bit about Charging Network because if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. We can't get the masses to adopt electric vehicles until we have a good, reasonable, and reliable charging network. And this last year, we have had a ton of legislation that has been passed which has really brought a lot of funds to help with pushing an EV charging network, a public EV charging network here in the US. Yep. And we're seeing some of these charging companies here at CES. So it'll be really interesting to see if they're coming out with even better technology because as it sits today, you don't have to know much about electric cars to know the status of the public charging network. Yep, very true. You know, um, what, what, actually, to your point, electric vehicle charging is probably the biggest holdback to someone making a purchasing decision. Um, you know, we, we've seen so many times people buy Tesla just for the charging network. And honestly, that's why I own two of them, because if I have to get somewhere, like I had to come here to CES, opt in a Tesla, no worries. It's still a pain in the ass, and that's putting it lightly, to road trip on public networks. And uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There's a lot of software and hardware integration that needs to be done that isn't being done. And um, man, I think CES this year uh, will show where each company has their vision. And the ones that will succeed are the ones who are focusing reliability, ease of access, and ease of installation. Uh, other than that, I think we're gonna see a lot of pop-ups in the charging space, people trying to catch the, the big money coming in funding, and uh, they'll, they'll be out of business in three to five years, a lot of them. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I really think that part of the issue is, like right now, we're seeing some pretty and, yeah, we have awesome, buzz, Titan, awesome cars. GT, EX90. It's under wraps, so I'm not uh, spilling the beans, but <laughs> we have one of these on pre-order and I'm so excited about it. My oh, wife right. is more excited about this car than any electric car we've had so far. But with that said, the problem is this, that car can be the best electric car on the road, but it's only gonna matter to a small degree if we can't somehow figure out a way to make a reliable, fast charging network. And that's what we're hoping to see a lot of while we're here at CES. But man, there are some awesome cars here and it's actually super distracting. And uh, yeah, pretty sick. I guess they're removing the wrap on this Tycon. ID we, Buzz. We, we, we gotta walk back there. I know that Mr. Kyle Connor has been in the ID Buzz. I have not. Look at this thing. I love the colors of this one. This is like a special spec. And in the US, only two-tone. Only so two-tone. Oh, that's so awesome. So if you didn't hear that, two-tone is standard here in the US. So colors like this will be available here domestically. I'm actually really excited to see this. This car actually represents more than just a van. And this is going to be extremely practical for most people. I know vans are not cool, but this van, is really cool so back on track here so as we start to look to the future kyle what do you think is going to happen because what we have today isn't going to work but is it a matter of just upgrading what we have or do we need to really start from scratch no and and you know i guess uh a lot of people will say we want to use the north american charging standard let's use that uh and while i do think that is a nicer connector and i would prefer if we all used it it's not going to solve any of the hardware problems or charging problems we have today and the reason i say that is um NACS is just the end of the cable. It's just the connector. So the cables will still have issues. Certainly they could use cables similar to Tesla's version three charger, but that's a very short run. Most of these chargers have to accommodate a lot of different cars, which means longer cables, thicker cables, heavy cables. We're back to where we started. Then of course, um, you know, the communications, the activation, it's actually spec to run on pretty much the same communication as CCS. So a little bit different, which is interesting that older Teslas wouldn't be able to charge on NACS without the CCS retrofit upgrade that they're doing. At least that's how I read the spec. And then the actual chargers are still going to have the same issue more or less of, you know, providing the power. The, the charging hardware is no different. 
what would really solve everything, it would make charge point operators happy, it would make everyone happy, is if Tesla sold their superchargers to the public. But they're installing so many of their own stations that they don't have extra capacity to sell to everyone else. That one right there. Yeah. Yeah. What they did is um, they gave this car to Kyle and then had him drive it before they brought it to CES to put it on display and make it look bad. Uh, that's right. A lot of the naysayers, though, that's exactly what they're talking about when they talk about Tesla having one charging adapter and, and you know, there being really three versions out there now at this point, which seems to be consolidating to two. But is that what's really holding us back no. or is it something else? It's an easy one to talk about because it's the yeah. first time you get to a charger as a new EV driver. You're like, how do I get the plug in? Uh, but then when you think broader picture, it's, it's yes, uh, Tesla's connector is way better. Um, it really comes down to, to reliable hardware that is less expensive. The problem is with so much government funding coming in, uh, everyone's getting assistance to install chargers. And there's no incentive to make it cheaper. It's a little bit like medical equipment. Like if you can charge for it, go for it. Everyone's production constrained. You know you're going to get all the orders, so jack up the price. So we're putting in very expensive non-reliability tested chargers and it's a bit of a shame this thing is sick this this is wild look at this thing this thing is massive of course we can't see it completely right now but that's where i personally have concerns uh yes we needed to fund a public charging network and yes we're doing that to a degree but like you just said it becomes the wild wild west out there when it comes to grabbing these dollars and is that going to make it even more complex and make it even more sporadic when it comes to reliability and then therefore does that end up hurting EV adoption in the long run? Well it is right now so we've, we've seen tons of people comment hey I'm gonna wait to buy an electric car until I know I can go to any charger and it'll work great and uh, we're a ways off from that I don't see it really getting better quickly because it takes a long time to develop hardware and uh, right now there's some great hardware in Europe, specifically Alpitronic units, as well as ChemPower, really high quality, long lasting, weather tested stuff, not for sale in the US yet. And honestly, there's little incentive for those companies to come here at the moment because everyone's putting chargers in all over Europe. And, uh, but thankfully, I believe they have plans. End of this year, we'll start to see the trickling in. We'll get their leftovers more or less. Uh, what I really think someone needs to do, if they're really smart, will just write a blank check to Alpitronic and say, I want a year's worth of production. And that's how you start a charging company. I mean, it'd be so much money. You need so much money to put it in. Um, and, and the other side of it is there's not really a free market business case to charging at the moment. Tesla does it, they can sell cars. Yep. Uh, if you and I wanted to start a charging company, we're in for a million dollars by the time you're done with everything for a four post site. Right. Uh, and that's conservative. One. Yeah. One. Yeah. Pick and, your location. And smart. then it's like, you know, we have to pay for electricity. We get jammed with demand charges and you can't charge more than 31 cents a kilowatt hour because that's what EA charges. Right. So you're already capped at that price. There's no business case. Right. We'll get there, but it's going to be a rocky road. You know, and I think that's a really important point too. People like you have actually been to Europe. Actually, you go to Europe quite a bit and, yep. you, and you get to see firsthand what it could be like. And I think that that's where the rest of us here in America probably struggle some because we don't know what the promised land looks like quite as much as, you know, you do. It's and amazing over there. You know, I just took a trip in a, in a Taycan and had to go somewhere quick and, you know, de-restricted speed limits on autobahns in Germany. So you're using a lot of energy. You're charging very fast. That car can do 270 kilowatts. And every charger worked, gave me full power, first time activation, plug in charge, no issues. And I'm like, wow, it can work if you have the right hardware and the right software, both of which we don't have in the US yet. And it's been proven over and over. So last question related to this topic. So Rivian has been working on rolling out their public charging network. I'm not talking about the small chargers that they put up in really cool locations, but their adventure network that they're talking about blowing out DC fast charging across the US. Are you skeptical? Are you optimistic? Or are you a wait and see? Well, there's a lot that I like that Rivian's doing. You know, I think, um, first of all, that, that right now it's just for Rivian. So it's a closed loop. And I think that's smart because they're able to get all the data from the trucks and all the data from the chargers to make sure everything is working great. The thing that I like is they design, build, and spec all of their hardware in-house. They are still relying on some constraints though. For example, cables. 
uh, are just the publicly available uh, cables that have are known to fail. But I know the guys who developed the hardware and they've worked really hard on reliability here. I've used them a few times with no issue. The problem really is can they build enough of them? They're trying to ramp up trucks. They're trying to put in a network. They're burning cash like crazy. And right now they're not making a penny from this network because it's free for all Rivian owners. So we'll see what happens. I don't think it's gonna be the saving grace that we all hope it will be, but it'll be a nice perk if you happen to find one until they build out a network. The, the biggest problem with building out a charging network other than funding it is actually getting the power run to the sites. And uh, you need really good site permitting process. You're held up by utilities all the time. It's just gonna be a slow go. And I think that's one of the areas where Tesla has really optimized, but it's because of experience. It's not because it's Tesla, it's because they've put in thousands upon thousands of charging locations. So they've really got it down to a science and I think that there's opportunities as we look into 2023 with more and more challenges, there's more opportunities to look at where can these companies work together and collaborate and make it a better experience for everybody. And that's what I personally am looking for as we go into 2023 with the unique challenges ahead. So I know we've been talking a lot about charging, but I do have one last question. And this is something that's been bothering me for the longest time and it is, when we look at the EV market, we are talking about everybody's rush to make a premium product, right. everybody. So after Tesla has shown it's possible, we can actually make a profit selling electric vehicles. They did it with premium cars. Now everybody wants to make premium electric cars and that is not what the market needs right now. We don't need another $100,000 electric car. What we need is a $30,000, a $20,000 electric car. What, who do you think, where do you see the most opportunities coming as we look in the next year or two? Not 10 years down the road, but the next year or two. Well, the reason most electric cars are premium is because the batteries are very expensive. It's actually not that much more expensive to make a premium car. So by the time you slap in a big battery, you have to develop electric architecture, you're like, oh, I kind of need a nice interior to justify the cost of this. And so that's the direction most companies end up going. To develop an inexpensive car requires things that are easily accessible. You can buy them from suppliers. Um, for example, with Volkswagen, you know, we've seen you know, different deals where uh, Ford's going to use their MEB platform, saves them all that engineering cost. They can go in and buy that, uh, buy that platform. The problem is there isn't really that many electric platforms on sale yet, and certainly not in mass. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to see many cheap electric cars launching that are going to be good or worthwhile. Most of the stuff's going to be high cost, expensive cars to justify all the engineering time required. Um, but I will say, we were talking about this before, first few months of this year, buy a Bolt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're pretty cheap with the tax credit. There's a three month window here that may actually work out really well. Um, the Bolt is the craziest, best value electric car in America right now. Right now, you'd be, oh, I think I'm gonna go buy one. You'd be dumb <laughs> yeah. not to. You could buy a Bolt EUV and yeah. still have a better value than most electric cars on the road today. It's insane. But Kyle, thanks so much for giving us a preview as we walk through CES 2023, the day before we go live. It was very good catching up with you and getting your insights on charging infrastructure. Yeah. Really Alyssa, fun. thanks for hanging out with us as well. No problem. Anytime. So if you like this video, of course, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.